Welcome to this episode of Q&A with Liturgy Man. I'm Taylor Burton Edwards, Liturgy Man with Discipleship Ministries of the United Methodist Church. I'm your apportionment dollars at work to help you strengthen worship and the understanding of worship where you are. Today's question comes to us from Brandon Scott, pastor in Indiana Conference, and Tina Blake from the Baltimore Washington Conference, both of whom asked questions on uh, UMC Clergy Facebook group recently about who may serve at Holy Communion, who may serve the elements to the people of Holy Communion. Our current ritual allows for um, a great variety of people to do this. It does not specify, uh, and there is in fact no statement in the United Methodist Church that clearly states this is the way it shall be. These persons may serve, these persons may not serve. Not a thing. Our current uh, rubrics simply say the bread and wine are given to the people with these or other words being exchanged. And so it looks like there, just looking at that rubric itself in isolation from the larger history and other issues, that anybody who could actually do the acts of serving the bread to people and serving the cup in an effective way to people um, and saying these words and exchanging these words in some way would be eligible to serve. I'd like to suggest though that actually there may be something else we want to consider beyond just the practicalities of who can do the work physically and uh, verbally in the process of serving communion. And that is based on uh, history and based on theology. The history of, of Methodist and EUB ritual um, prior to 1964 is that in every version of the ritual that was ever published by those denominations and their predecessor denominations, there was actually a fairly severe constriction about who could serve the elements. Only the pastors, only the clergy were authorized to serve the elements of Holy Communion to the people. You find that in the rubrics consistently. It is the EUB never eliminated that from their books of worship or uh, their ritual in the hymnal. That's what it said. It was the minister who was doing this work, not other people. The Methodists in 1964 and in the 1965 Book of Worship had this rubric for the first time. The minister shall first receive the Holy Communion in both kinds and then shall deliver the same to any who are assisting. So for the first time, beginning with the 1964 hymnal and 1965 Book of Worship, the Methodist Church was authorizing laity to assist in serving the elements. Not until then. So there is this history of some constraint, which I would like to suggest we ought to consider as we look at one other element, which is our theological reflection on the sacraments in by water and the spirit, and this holy mystery, in both of which we say baptism normally precedes Holy Communion. Since that is the norm, that is what we ought to be presenting in those who are leading. The, those who are the leaders ought to represent the norm, the normal practice of the church. That doesn't mean that in every case you have to have persons who are baptized serving, but it should certainly be the norm that those who are serving aren't simply there for practical reasons, but also because they are among the norm of the community of, of the baptized. And so uh, that history of that kind of constraint combined with this norm, I think together gives a, a strong implication that uh, baptism ought to be a kind of minimum requirement along with the ability to, to do the acts of serving or breaking off the bread or picking up the bread and serving it to another and saying the appropriate words in appropriate ways at the time. That's my response to the question. I hope this has been helpful. Remember, you can always contact me, worship at liturgyfolks.com, through the UMC Worship Facebook group, or even UMC Clergy Facebook group, or drop a line on this page. And perhaps your question or comment will become the basis for a future episode of Q&A with Liturgy Man. In the peace of Christ, be always with you.